Welcome to Money Answers TV. I'm your host, Jordan Goodman of MoneyAnswers.com. Today we're going to find out how you can settle your medical bills for hundreds and probably even thousands of dollars less than you owe using a healthcare advocacy service. My guest is Kevin Flynn. He's the president of Healthcare Advocates. Kevin, welcome to Money Answers TV. Thank you for having me today, Jordan. Great to have you. So, Kevin, how big a problem is it? that Americans are in a huge amount of medical debt these days? Well, medical bills are of epidemic proportion. There's well over a trillion dollars of medical debt out there, and there are a few reasons why. First, you have things like out of network. That's when somebody goes and sees a doctor outside their network. Ultimately, they are gonna be paying a much higher percent of that bill than is covered by the insurance company. Next thing, anybody on Obamacare knows about the high deductible plans, where your deductible, which is the amount you must pay before insurance begins to kick in, is 6,000 and 12,000. So in those situations, people have health insurance, but they don't have access to care because how many of us have six and $12,000 to immediately pay for your health care. Now, what's very interesting is Harvard had done some studies and they found that 50% of the people filing personal bankruptcy are including the medical bills. And amazingly, this isn't people without insurance. These are people who are insured, but they go out of network or they get cancer and they have large co-insurances. So the whole problem of medical debt ruining families' financial welfare, it's really staggering. So what does healthcare advocates do to help people settle their debts for less than they owe? Well, we do a couple things. First thing we want to do is look at the bill. Were you a man charged for a hysterectomy? Oh, okay, you were scheduled for an MRI, but you never had the MRI. These things occur. Next thing we're going to do is look for medical errors. In one case, we had a man with a $190,000 medical bill. You know how much he paid? Zero, because he found a medical error. They did not treat him prophylactically for a blood clot, so he was readmitted. We're all, so we're looking for things, medical errors, billing errors, um, over-treatment, many, many different things. And then when that is exhausted, we're looking at financial aid, grants, anything that we can do to help reduce the bill. There are a lot of tools in our toolkit. We just have to see which ones apply to your case. Give me a range of what kind of discount you end up getting for people over what they owe in their medical bills. Absolutely. Well, first thing we do is we're not just crusaders out there to get everybody. We want to make sure that the bill's legitimate, and if it's not, we're going to get a reduction based upon incorrect billing, improper medical care, maybe they're over-treating. But generally, we're getting between anywhere from 20 to 100%, but generally, you can expect somewhere around 40% reduction on your bill. So what kind of records do you want people to bring to you uh, when you, they start the whole case uh, so that the case goes well. I tell you, Jordan, we love it one conversation where the person invests time, minimal time, and gets all the answers they want in one conversation. The way we achieve that is we ask them to send us their itemized medical bill and their insurance explanation of benefits. With the itemized medical bill and the explanation of benefits, we can tell what was billed, how it was processed, and who's responsible for the payment. Because a lot of it's deductible, is it out of network? These items tell us a lot of information. Then if we think we can help you, we'll then ask for medical records to help to further substantiate, well, this person was charged for seven pick lines. Well, you and I both know, if they're charged for seven pick lines, it means they missed six times and they got it right once. So medical records help substantiate those sorts of reductions. So why do medical providers, like doctor's offices and hospitals, reduce the bills so that people can pay an awful lot less than was owed? Well, often they're not reducing the bills. Mind you, at times they are. A lot of it is simply just adjusting to make the bill reflect what actually occurred. Because there are billing errors. They charge for something. They overcharge for something. They charged you for a service that never occurred. So there are those. But then after we look through the bill and we say this is a correct statement, then there are also incentives. Are you entitled for financial aid? Is there a grant available? Uh, does the doctor know that, well, they're never actually going to get paid? Some people just don't have the money. The doctor knows it. So the doctor would rather gets something than nothing. Again, there are lots of tools here, and there are lots of compassionate providers out there that want to help the patients pay because they don't want to see these patients go to collections. Mind you, 
a doctor or a hospital, that's a long-term relationship. You're not going there for a quick aspirin. So these providers understand we have a relationship and a duty with you as the patient. So they actually want to help you meet your financial obligations. So they will help you in times of need and things of that. So between looking for medical errors, billing errors, financial aid, and the compassion where the doctor or the hospital understands you just can't meet it, we are very successful in reducing these bills for people, thereby protecting their and their family's financial well-being. How do you get insurance companies to pay for a claim that they've denied? Uh, that's never easy. <laughs> these days, insurance companies are fighting more and more because, as you know, the more insurance companies deny claims, the more profits they make. That's really, you can track some of these insurance companies on the stock market and you know how their denial rates are going. We've actually done that. So in that case, we have to go Perry Mason. We have to put a little case together. We have to investigate why the insurance company is not paying. We have to investigate the medical need. There's a term out there called medical necessity. Things like, if you have a broken arm, you can see it on an x-ray. But if you're an addict and you need mental health coverage, well, that's subjective. No one can say yes or no. So what we need to do is build a case upon medical necessity, saying, this is the procedure. This is why it's medically necessary. Here's the research to prove that it's safe and effective compared to conservative treatments. Then you also have to prove that you've tried other conservative treatments, and these are, of course, less expensive conservative treatments, and these have all failed. So you're really putting a little Perry Mason case together. You have to research what the insurance company's guidelines are. You have to research what the medical agenda or past procedures were put it together, and then you send it off to the insurance company. And then here's the funny part. When you send these uh, documents off to the insurance company, they lose them. It's over 80% of the time they're telling us, we didn't receive your materials. Okay, so now we have to start all over again and resubmit things. So part of it is putting the case together. The second part is you have to have the tenacity to fight the insurance companies because in our opinion, they will accidentally on purpose lose these materials time and time again. So if private or government insurance does not cover your full bill, say you've still got a big deductible, can you still help people reduce the bills that they've got? Absolutely. And again, we go through auditing uh, the bills, things like that. So if the insurance company has paid part of it, maybe it's an out-of-network claim where the insurance company paid their portion and they left you with a balanced bill things of that, we can absolutely help people. And it, there's no one magic pill to cure all of this. Everybody's situation is different. Who is your insurance company? What was the procedure? Is it medically necessary? Is it covered by guidelines? What is your coinsurance? How much is deductible? There are lots of questions which go into all these things. And unfortunately, because there's so many questions, it's not an if then. If this, then you win. It's always an if then, but. And those buts you really have to look for because something's going to come down the road which might derail you. But ultimately, if you're tenacious and you're smart and we put in the effort, we can get you a result. So, Kevin, why is it better to use healthcare advocates to try to settle the bill instead of having people do it on their own? Well, first, I would tell everybody if you don't hire a professional, by all means, do it yourself. If you don't try, you're never going to get anywhere. So, by all means, fight the fight. But there's a reason to hire healthcare advocates. It's the same reason when you're sick, you go to the doctor. When you have a legal problem, you go to a lawyer. Because you're dealing with professionals that deal with these issues every day. They know how to sidestep the problems and get you good results in a very quick way. There's also the whole matter of time. How much time do you have to fight this? So you should hire healthcare advocates because we're experienced with this. And one thing which we also often tell people is intelligence doesn't replace experience. You have to know the questions to ask. You have to answer the questions before they're asked. So you have to go in prepared, knowing how to achieve the result. Because if not, you're just going to make a person angry and upset. We've all had that person who's called us 10, 20 times a day, and eventually we just get tired of them and want them to go away, and we're not going to do them any favors. So healthcare advocates has the experience and the tools to get your results. One of our best tools is simply our letterhead. We had insurance companies and hospitals lose our materials for years. You know, the whole, let's just throw it in the waste bin because I don't want to have to deal with it. Well, once they realize that we're not going to go away, they say, okay, we have to deal with these. We also build relationships. So they know that we are a formidable company. We're not going to go away just by not calling us back or ignoring us. But we know the strategies and the tools on how to get a successful result. Some patients will get a, a nice result. But because of our experience, we know how to get a fantastic result. 
So Kevin, why is it better to use healthcare advocates instead of going to a lawyer to resolve these issues? There are a couple of answers. First, the legal bill is probably going to be more than your medical bill. We see that all the time. Second, lawyers litigate matters, whereas healthcare advocates, we resolve them. In fact, we have a lot of lawyers as clients. Lawyers realize that the legal process is expensive and time consuming, where well, healthcare advocates we're inexpensive, we're results driven. In fact, one of the proudest days of my life, we received a call from a lawyer. This person was a lawyer with the largest insurance company in America. And what she said to us was, I asked around, the lawyer was having coverage issues, who's the best company? They said, healthcare advocates. So we were quite pleased when you hear the lawyer at the biggest insurance company in America is coming to healthcare advocates. I think that says a lot about our results. Why is it better to go to healthcare advocates than other healthcare advocacy companies doing the same kind of thing? Um, I want to apologize because a lot of advocacy companies are one person, a mom and pop shop. We get calls, oh, my advocate went out of business. They said to call you. Other people, they use an advocacy company that is given to them by their employer. And they say, no, I want to make sure that I'm getting the best results possible. And so one thing which sets healthcare advocates apart is we don't sell empathy. A lot of companies do that. They will sit there and they'll tell you, oh, that's terrible. We don't sell empathy. We sell results. So at the end of the day, you're going to get a meaningful result for yourself. So that's why we're the best company. What kind of a difference have you made in people's lives whose debts you've settled? Well, I remember one case. We had a, a young girl. She was anorexic. She spent over six months in therapy, inpatient therapy. And what the family did is they took, the, they had three children, they took the children's college educations to help pay for the young daughter's treatment, which meant those three kids, they're gonna have a hard time going to college. They hired healthcare advocates. We replenished the majority of that college fund. So now those three kids are going off to college because we were there to safeguard their financial well-being. When a medical catastrophe happens, and that's something for which people don't plan, they plan their rent payment, they plan their car payment, Nobody plans for a medical catastrophe. That's why we're there. We're there to protect your savings and make sure medical bills don't ruin your life. So if people want to find out more and see if they can have their medical bills settled, how can they contact you? Well, it's simple. You can just go on the internet, go to healthcareadvocates.com. You can call us at 215-735-7711, or you can just email us at info at healthcareadvocates.com. Thanks so much, Kevin. You're going to help an awful lot of people. Oh, thank you, Jordan. So if you want to get out from under the burden of medical debt, look into settling them with a healthcare advocacy service such as Healthcare Advocates. For Money Answers TV, I'm Jordan Goodman.